<laughs> so, now that I got your attention, I can finally say it. The wait is almost over and we're gonna get a new league pretty soon. And I gotta say, I'm very hyped so far. Yesterday's showcase has been amazing, a lot of good stuff coming up. So I thought to myself, hey, you're already late to the party, but we can still put out a video because hey, why not? As you probably already know, my prediction video has aged like milk. Or rather like milk. <laughs> Sadly, we're not gonna get any character deleting brooches, baguette weapons, or val orbs with unpredictable outcomes, but we've got something similar ish with the new league mechanic itself that we're gonna talk about in a minute. This video might not be 100% accurate, so if I fudge up anything, don't be mad. Let me know in the comments below and then unsubscribe. No, 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 don't unsubscribe, I'm just kidding. We're also gonna talk a bit about this channel right afterwards just to keep you guys updated. It's been a while and I may or may not have some announcements for you. But enough stalling now. Grab yourselves a snack, sit back, relax, and let's dive right into it, shall we? Path of Exile's Scourge League introduces the Blood Crucible, an artifact that a random stranger tells you to show up your butt. I mean implant into your body, so that you may collect the blood of your enemies. Monsters that you will slay in that case. Killing enough monsters will eventually make it possible for your character to dimension shift into an alternate version of Rayclast, where you'll be killing even more monsters. The longer you stay in this subzone, the more damage you take. But you may ask, what are we killing these monsters for this time? Before entering the alternate dimension, you want to insert an item into your blood crucible, making it absorb the corruption from the other side and allowing you, after a certain threshold, to corrupted in amazing and unpredictable ways. As soon as the Scourge Corruption happens, your item gets two new modifiers. A beneficial one as well as a detrimental one. Here's the kicker though. Your item is not entirely ruined now as you're still able to insert it into the Crucible again, modifying it up to three times in its entirety. And boy oh boy, let me tell you, there are some nice outcomes that we'll be able to achieve here. On top of that, the Scourge modifiers that you slam onto the item are not even counted as implicit, making it able to corrupt or enchant the item before Scourge corrupting it, which is huge! The good thing about these corruptions is that a lot of builds might not be affected too much by the detrimental effects. As an igniter, you might not really care about physical damage if you're playing a pure elemental build, so that is great! There's a lot of options here in which you can brick or enhance your items, and I'm looking forward to some Steel Mage clips who's going to roll insane items next league. I see you, dude. We'll also get these fancy new currencies that can adjust corrupted items without needing to benchcraft these. Seeing that these currencies have the same chances as fusing, coloring and socketing as the normal orbs have, I'm just hoping that they'll drop as frequently as their non-tainted counterparts do. You can also further enhance your crucible as well by killing monsters in the alternate raid class, making this a bit of a grind, but you're probably doing the leak mechanic anyway, so it's not that bad in my opinion. The modifiers here include general enhancements, like certain item types being able to be scourge corrupted earlier, or even being able to corrupt unique items this way. I can't wait to break my tabulas again. <laughs> With the Dream Furnace, you'll be able to juice your maps with your Blood Crucible as well, stacking rewards as well as detrimental modifiers. I mean, look at this example. Three additional map drops per rare Scourge mob as well as seven stack decks, but the downside is huge, because you're losing 300 life per second while in the Nightmare, as well as the monsters getting extra damage on top of that. I'm thinking that this league is definitely going to be a rippy one, and I think that not many players will have a build that will be able to do this kind of content. So yeah, very high risk, very high reward though. It's gonna be interesting. Furthermore, in PoE Scourge we get a massive amount of quality of life changes. Now we gladly don't have to roll dice anymore when we're doing lab trials, as the requirement of completing every uber lab trial has been completely removed. Now you just need an offering to the goddess to enter the uber lab. I really, really, really love this change. Sure, you have to complete one trial still to get an offering and the level requirement is now at level 68, but let's be real here. It's still going to take so much less time to get your fourth ascension done. I for once have been thinking for a long time now that old content should be somewhat adjusted or removed entirely from the game, as it is getting more and more convoluted, and I think this is definitely a step into the right direction. Thumbs up GGG. More quality of life changes also include an atlas overhaul, finally! The amount of atlas maps gets cut in half, there's now only 100 left with 18 additional unique maps. 
Furthermore, we have only 4 atlas regions now, which halves the time for farming watchstones as well, now only needing 16 watchstones altogether. From a casual perspective, this is great, of course. Needing much less time to actually being able to access the endgame content quote unquote was long overdue. I'm not sure how many players actually reach maps in each league, but hey, they might have an incentive to do so now. I for one am very happy about this. To be honest, I did not really care too much about beating Cyrus, and I didn't even do it last league, as I had much more fun just re-rolling and playing different builds all the time, but maybe, just maybe, even I will now be able to consistently beat Cyrus. Last but not least, they actually overhauled the passive skill tree, introducing masteries. In each class around the tree, you will now find a bigger button that will activate as soon as you allocate the first big notable in a cluster. You'll then have the option of picking one modifier out of a list of modifiers that relate to the cluster to permanently add to your character, basically like acquiring another skill point. GGG wanted to make the tree a bit more compact, reducing the need to travel the tree for a long time just to get a mod that your build would desperately need. Also, I think the solution is way more intuitive and way faster than just trying to find good nodes on a tree. On top of that, there are a good chunk of interesting build-enabling modifiers that people are probably already theory crafting about. Uh, by the way, has anyone already thought about doing a strength stacking ignite character? Because if you do so, hit me up, I need to play some kind of meme build next leak. With a new leak, also new skill gems will be introduced, and I can't wait to try out the new lightsaber skill called Energy Blade. Dude, I can finally cosplay my favorite Star Wars characters, us nerds, am I right? Uh. I have pretty much no idea how to set it up yet, if anyone has a crazy theory, let me know. Other than that, we'll get the new Tornado skill gem, which doesn't look that great to be honest. From the trailer it looks really slow. I guess it would be used the same way as the hydrosphere would be utilized as you can shoot your projectiles in it and a portion of that damage will be reflected to the enemies. Chris said that you'll be able to link it with support gems to make it better but we will have to see. I'll try it out definitely and cram it in a build just to see how it feels. With Temporal Rift, they basically made you be able to mimic this guy, which is pretty sweet. It reserves 10% of your mana, which is sustainable if you know the effect. Reactivating this gem will allow you to go back 4 seconds in time, moving your character to that position, as well as resetting your life, mana and energy shield to the values they had then. This is pretty amazing and might be used heavily in hardcore, as it is just a better way of using an enduring cry, in my opinion at least. We also get a new concussion skill as well that uses your life flask instead of a utility flask. Nothing much to say here, it's poison based and basically works the same way as explosive concoction does. As compensation for basically killing aura bots, they also introduced some party skills, which look interesting I guess. I have to say I don't really care about those as I'm playing solo most of the time, but they're a nice addition. Also if you link yourself to your partner and your partner dies, you die as well. Use with caution I guess. The thing that I was immediately thinking, if you could use this with the reaper skill from last league, but I'm not sure how viable that would be as it is still a minion in the end and <laughs> imagine you linking yourself to a squishy skeleton and dying in hardcore because of that. Despite a lot more quality of life changes, defenses rework and alley damage over time reworks that you probably know about already as you surely have read the manifestos, they also reworked guilds, providing us with working guild stash tabs as well as actual guild hideouts. Oh, by the way, the master favor system has been completely removed, making every hideout decoration free real estate. So go ham and create the hideout of your dreams without having to worry about the cost. Here's the thing, I have to say I don't necessarily care about the guild rework as I don't use the guild feature at all, but I would have loved to see to actually be able to spawn in your hideout or guild hideout when you log into the game. That still is one of the features that I miss and I'm so dearly hoping they will include this one day. Please, GGG, if you're listening, make it happen. <laughs> Expedition goes core by the way, but with adjustments, you'll only encounter Expedition's percent of the time in maps, splinters are now auto pick up and work basically the same way as organs from the metamorph do, making them non-tradable of course. I think keeping the system is alright, as I said before, maybe a bit convoluted now and it's getting more convoluted, but hey, I will definitely use it because we will get this fucking new amazing belt, dude! I don't know if you've seen this yet, but look, mage blood, this belt is awesome, dude. Remember your flask macro, you don't need it anymore, no no no, just get yourselves like 80 or 100 exalted orbs, grab a player on the trade side of your choice and BAM! No more using flasks yourself. Also, the possibilities, dude. Being able to constantly apply the flask effects will not only make bossing way smoother, no. There are so many ways in which you could use this belt as well. Firegrass made a video recently where he's explaining those possibilities with very huge amazing numbers. This belt is amazing, dude. I, I swear. 
This is Headhunter 2.0. Not only for keeping your hands alive, obviously. By the way, speaking of healthy hands, did I mention that this... is now a thing of the past? Currency will now drop overall less frequently, but therefore in stacks of multiple items at once, making you click way less, which is amazing. I really welcome this. I'm having hand pain all the time, not only in like my left, but also my right clicking hand, so give me. Give me more, please. <laughs> yeah, and also we'll get uber content up the wazoo in the forms of timeless jewels, breach, and blighted maps also. Have fun, hardcore Andes. <laughs> There's just so much more to talk about in this league and I could go over the patch notes for the next three hours but hey I think you can do this yourself and there's already so many videos out for that and to be honest I don't really want to share my secret builds with you guys. <laughs> Winky face. Just kidding obviously. All in all I'm super excited for the next league and you should be as well in my opinion. Really looking forward to the massive quality of life updates and of course the new league mechanic itself. It feels like they have been listening this time and I appreciate the effort they put into this. So congrats GGG, this is hopefully going to be a really really good league. So what are your opinions for the Path of Exile Scourge League so far? Are you gonna play it and if not, why? Tell us in the comments below. So, I said something about channel updates, eh? Let's get right into it. Still not subscribed? How dare you? Um, hello? Are we back? Yes? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, well, that was weird. Anyways, you are surely awaiting the next animation video, I understand. Please be patient, we're working on something bigger at the moment. We want to make a little Halloween special thingy and already dropped a little teaser for that. So check that out if you would like. And yes, of course, it's gonna be PoE related, guys, no worries. I've also been thinking of new video formats to introduce to this channel. What I've been thinking about in particular are quick animated guides that are especially directed towards new players. The thing about PoE guides in general that annoys me a lot is that they're almost always 10 minutes plus, some of them taking an hour of your time. And I want to make like smaller tidbit videos that a new player could digest much quicker. So that is like one idea that's been floating around these days. But if you have any suggestions for stuff that you would like to see, please let me know. I'm always open for ideas and I've already incorporated some stuff from your comments into my video, so thank you very much for that. Other than that, I would love to give you more content in general if time allows me to do so. At the moment university is super time consuming, but I'm working on it so I can finish next year, maybe focusing on this YouTube and Twitch thingy for a while afterwards. By the way, if you would like, follow me on twitch.tv slash milk underscore dude as well. I've been streaming more regularly recently and I will stream my league start next week 100% and I may try to pull an all-nighter if possible. No promises though. I love my sleep. I might even have a little surprise, cosplay-wise, you know? It's nothing big, but it's gonna be fun. But guys, let me thank you for all your support and the great comments you're leaving on this channel. I'm reading every single one of them and you always manage to make me laugh. Sorry for not answering everybody. I'll try to be more active in the future. But hey, this is the end of the video. My throat kinda hurts now from all this talking, but I hope I didn't waste your time too much. Don't forget subscribe like share this channel with your friends because did you know that 86% of Path of Exile players that watch this channel are not <laughs> ah, dude no I can't do this <laughs> who actually does things like those in their videos <laughs> anyways I love you all have a good one guys subscribe